someone's going to try to unalive you. Damn, what did I do to cause this? Hey yo, what's wrong with YouTube gang? It's your boy CJ. And today, I want to tell you about how one of my friends predicted I was going to get deleted. What? What the fuck? Yeah, crazy. But let's stop wasting time and let's get straight into it. You see, this all happened about two weeks before my injury. I walked into vocal class and I wasn't there for no more than about 10, 15 minutes before one of my friends called me over. Uh, let's call this guy Baby D because Baby D is big as hell. Hey, yo! Pause. And when I say that, I mean he's like 6'2", 6 6'3", 2, 6 250 pounds, solid. Now Baby D, he's a gentle giant. Like he even told me a story about how he wanted to be a boxer, right? His first boxing match, he said he beat the dude up so bad that he put the dude in a hospital and he never fought again after that. So you already know, he ain't about that life. Now remember what I'm telling you, cause that's gonna come in handy about his character later on. Now Baby D calls me over, right? And he's like, yo CJ, I need to talk to you. It's important. So I go over there, I'm chilling, I'm talking to him. First thing out of his mouth is, someone's gonna try to unalive you. No, 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 hell no. Wait, what? What are you talking about, bro? You didn't even say hi to me. You didn't even ask me how my day was going. This conversation got real, real quick. But he says that, and I'm looking at him like, bro, what are you talking about? He looks at me again and says, bro, someone's going to try to unalive you if you don't get rid of your anger. And I'm like, bro, I don't even do anything. Stop driving my car crazy. I don't have an attitude problem anymore. I just be chilling now. That's when I stand up and I look at him and we're like eye to eye because I'm only 5'6". And like I said, he's a real life giant. But he looks at me straight in my eyes and says, no, bro, you need to get rid of your anger because if you don't, someone's going to unalive you. And I can't lie, when he said it that time, that shit hit home. But me being stubborn, I said, nah, bro, I'm good. I'm chilling, nothing gonna happen. He shakes his head, gives me dap, and I literally walk into the hallway. Now fast forward two weeks, I'm laying face first on the cold concrete floor, and all I could think is, damn, what did I do to cause this? Now don't worry guys, I'm gonna tell you later in detail about that incident. Let's just say it was crazy and I'm lucky to be alive. But it didn't dawn on me right away until about a week later after being in the hospital that Baby D told me that. That's when I went crazy and I was like, yo, where's Baby D? I gotta talk to him. I gotta find out what else he knows. But that's when the story gets crazy because then they tell me they haven't seen Baby D in over a week. Like he just vanished. So now I'm freaking out. All these thoughts running through my head. Man, I should have listened to him. Man, what else he knows? All this stuff. So now a week later pass, and then they tell me they found Baby D. And I'm like, all right, get him in here right now. Need to talk to him. Don't waste time. But nope, Baby D was in the hospital. Yeah, I know, crazy. They said Baby D tried to self-delete but nobody believed that because Baby D was into God. Baby D would never do that. If you ask anybody about him, nobody would ever think that he would do that. But the story that everybody do believe is that his girlfriend's ex-boyfriend, who wasn't the nicest of guys, did it. Now, I don't know what's true or not, but all I know is I don't think Baby D tried to self-delete. And I know what you're thinking, maybe Baby D is the one who put me in the hospital. Couldn't have been. Number one, I was driving my car and Baby D don't even have a car. In order for him to know I was gonna be at that location, which I haven't parked there in months, he would have to been staking out that location, which is unlikely. Number two, Baby D was Hispanic. The guys who shot me were black. 
So there's no way he could have done it. And number three, Baby D had no clue where I lived. Plus, he lived in the Bronx. I lived all the way in Queens. And you know the crazy thing is? I should have put two and two together because my vocal coach told me Baby D used to have visions. Now, I know you think that's crazy, but I've heard of a few times Baby D predicted something. That literally came true. But it didn't dawn on me until after I was hurt. But damn, man, now that I look back, there was plenty of signs that was telling me that this was gonna happen to me. I mean, there were signs from me having visions to certain things I would say, to even my grandmother telling me something back in the day. You know what? Come back next week, because I'll tell you guys all of the signs that I remember that should have told me this shit was gonna happen. Watch it back out there. We live in a cold world that will take everything from you if you allow it to. So don't think for one second that everything is all rainbows and sunny days. Because in a blink of an eye, everything can change. So be grateful for what you have and be happy that you're alive every day.